Coming in at number 10 is the major thing that sets advanced civilizations apart from their more primitive counterparts. There have been several situations throughout history where modern tools were discovered in prehistoric rocks. One of the most famous cases is a hammerhead found in London, Texas in 1934. You might not think that such a discovery is a noteworthy event, but this particular tool was encased in a 40 million year old rock. That would take it way back to the mid Paleozoic era, way before the first dinosaurs. Most of its composition was iron, despite the fact that iron smelting was only developed about 4,000 years ago. Throughout human history, use of tools and the manipulation of metal is one of the cardinal indicators that a civilization would develop beyond its peers. Oh snap! I just said the word of the day, cardinal. Cardinal means of the greatest importance. Good synonyms would be fundamental and primary. See if you can use cardinal in a sentence in the comment section below, and we'll feature the most creative phrase in our next video. One possible explanation for these mysterious tools is that the limestone sediment was formed around the man-made object. Another is that it's evidence of an ancient civilization that knew how to work metal millions of years ago. It's hard to hammer home, boom, a specific explanation, but it's worth mentioning that the tool hasn't rusted since its discovery. A similar case occurred in 1944 when a boy found a handmade bell in a 300 million year old lump of coal. Pop quiz, hotshot! What's the oldest tool that we know early humans used? See if you can guess the correct answer in the comment section below and stay tuned till later in the video to see if you're right. Early civilizations could have been wiped off the planet. We humans are excellent at adapting to natural environments, but we're still far away from being capable of protecting ourselves from the more destructive forces of Mother Nature. Hurricanes, earthquakes, volcanoes, asteroids, and other cosmic events can end us rather swiftly. Compare the strides that we've made in the past 300 years to the 4.5 billion years the Earth has been around. Not only are we young as a species, but due largely to the values that came out of the Enlightenment, our greatest technological leaps have happened in just a very short time span relative to our also short history. To that end, it isn't that far-fetched to assume that another civilization could have evolved, progressed, and disappeared in a similar time frame. There have been five mass extinctions that we know of already. One of them could very well have wiped out an entire humanoid civilization, and we today would have no clue. This is also reflected in the writings of many religions. There's a reoccurring idea of a global catastrophic event, like a flood, followed by the emergence of a fresh civilization. There are a number of artifacts that have been recovered throughout history which exhibit advanced knowledge that was subsequently lost. One such example is a mechanism that was recovered off the coast of the Greek island of Antikythera that was light years ahead of its time. Found in the remains of a shipwreck, this contraption has been dated back to anywhere from 205 to 60 BC. It was once a complex clockwork mechanism made up of more than 30 meshing bronze gears. What's wild is that it could accurately predict both solar eclipses and astronomical positions decades in advance. The mechanism could even model the moon's irregular orbit. Nobody knows how or why this knowledge was lost in antiquity. Devices of such complexity wouldn't reemerge until the 14th century. Whether or not the theory of evolution is your primordial cup of tea, it does exist within the realm of scientific consensus. There's even a theory that all life on Earth has a last universal common ancestor, or Luca. We're about to get a little Planet of the Apes up in here, so uh, hold on to your opposable thumbs. Observation of primate tool using behavior has led a number of scientists to argue that those primates are now entering a stone age of their own. This would mean that they're on a path towards further evolution. Oddly enough, it's a path that will be highly influenced by the planet's current dominant hominids. Yup, that's us, the good old fashioned homo sapiens. As history and Highlander have taught us, in the end, there can be only one. 
By that I mean that one intelligent hominid species will eventually hunt, outbreed, or outlast the other. It's why we don't see Neanderthals or Homo erectus around anymore. Our Homo sapien ancestors dispatched them with extreme prejudice. One theory is that this isn't humanity's first run, and that we're simply the end result of the latest evolutionary cycle. Personally, I think an ape uprising would be good for us. There's nothing like an existential crisis to really bring the species together. It wouldn't be a proper video on advanced ancient civilizations without some talk of higher beings. Almost every ancient culture had an abundance of deities with immense power that controlled the elements and weighed in on the fate of mankind. Regardless of the culture, it would seem that the gods involved themselves extensively in the lives of mortals. The scientific consensus is that these beings were imagined by mankind as a way of explaining the natural world around them. Yet other theories put forward the idea that these deities were either extraterrestrial visitors or survivors of an older, more advanced civilization. They presumably gave early humans the knowledge that enabled them to progress, and then they were consequently worshipped. The world's mythologies are riddled with such examples. From the Titan Prometheus, who gifted humanity with fire, to the gift of free will from the Christian God. Just think about it. A person with knowledge of electricity would have seemed like Zeus himself to the ancient Greeks. The theory of gods as engineers of ancient civilizations might explain how ancient Egypt seemed to have begun its civilization at the height of its power. Speaking of ancient Egypt, there are theories that it took over from an older civilization or that it peaked earlier than historians give it credit for. The Sphinx water erosion hypothesis has been cited in both claims. It states that the structure's walls show signs of erosion from extensive rainfall. For Egypt, the last period of such extensive rainfall was in the 4th millennium BC. This would place the construction of the Sphinx in the 5th or 6th millennium BC, which means that ancient Egypt was capable of building megaliths a lot earlier. Either that, or the civilization was established on the ruins of an advanced older one. Built in the 26th century BC, the Mohenjo-Daro was the crowning jewel of the Indus Valley civilization. The city covered about 300 hectares and may have had as many as 40,000 inhabitants. There's evidence of advanced urban planning in both the streets and the function of its structures. Mohenjo-Daro was abandoned during the decline of the Indus civilization around the 19th century BC. One author believes that the already impressive city of Mohenjo-Daro might have even had access to a weapon similar to an atomic bomb. Either that or a more advanced civilization used such a weapon against the city. In his book, The Atomic Destruction 20,000 BC, Dave Davenport wrote about the objects that were reportedly found at the site that seemed to have been fused, melted, or crystallized by an intense heat. There are also reports of high levels of radioactivity at the site. Moreover, a number of skeletons were found at the Mohanjo Daro that suggested a swift end in a cataclysmic event. The Indus script, which is a corpus of symbols produced by the Indus Valley civilization, might shed some light on the city's history. However, as of the making of this video, the script remains undeciphered. Realistically speaking, if a global cataclysmic event were to happen tomorrow, how long would it take us to turn back into the Flintstones? It's unlikely that any survivors would be too concerned with rebuilding the world as it was. Food and shelter would become the primary concerns. The world would start over, from skyscrapers to caves. As time passed, we would forget where we had come from, and all that was before would be regarded as myth and legend. It wouldn't be too different from how we look at ancient civilizations today. And who's to say that this hasn't already happened? Yabba dabba, yikes. It's answer time! So what is the oldest tool ever used by man? According to the Smithsonian, early stone tools were used by humans 2.6 million years ago. Specifically, these tools were known as Oldowan tools. What they were were basically stones that were chipped to have sharp edges. These tools were used by what's known as transitional humans. And much like transitional humans today, they needed to do some chopping. All the wands were multi-purpose and could be used to hammer, chop, or even dig. Have you ever wondered why, out of all of the surviving monuments from the ancient world, the most prevalent are made of stone? It's because stone is incredibly durable. Exposure to the elements affects stone at a slower rate than most metals or plastics. 
and we're talking about millions of years. This begs the question, how long were these structures there to begin with? While radiocarbon dating is typically seen as a reliable way of determining an object's age, it still has a limited range. There are many examples of stone structures that suggest skill and planning far beyond the characteristics of the time. The megalithic T-shaped pillars at Gobleki Tepe, dating back to the 10th century BC, would be the first. Another would be the numerous stone spheres in Costa Rica's Diki Delta. Their perfect shape and unclear significance has invited much speculation regarding their origin. Then there's the Kailasi Temple at the Ellora Caves in India. The megalith was carved out of a single rock with remarkable attention to detail that suggests knowledge that was arguably too advanced for its time. Thanks for watching. What do you think is the best piece of evidence that ancient civilizations actually existed? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our newest videos. Bye!